How's it going, guys? And welcome back to Retrospect, your go-to retro gaming podcast. You're listening to episode 52. Today, we'll be having a little audio-visual show-and-tell. So for all you audio listeners out there, we're still going to be so descriptive that you're going to be able to know what we're talking about. But if you want to see, you can go back and watch this and post and mm-hmm. really get an idea for what's going on, what we're showing off today. But uh, yeah, we thought it'd be kind of fun to, Brandon and I both have these giant collections of just retro things. And his more giant than mine, probably. But we're going to talk about these. And so, as always, joining me on the mics, we have the pride of Somerset, Brandon Saltalamacchio. What's up, yes, dude? Yes, I'm doing good, man. I'm excited about this. I told Kate, and she's like, what's your podcast about today? And I was like, oh, we're doing show and tell. And she's like, what, are you a 10 years old or something? Uh, but I'm excited. Yes. I got a few things I want to show you. And like my backdrop is just full of tat. So I know, sometimes man. I like to think that I'm a collector, but it's starting to turn into a bit of a, like a hoarding issue. Dude, Okay. <laughs> I, d- I don't want to offend any of the uh, retro gaming community, but there is there is like a line that I think you have to kind of consider as a collector. And there's like too much stuff. And then there's just like a nice aesthetic amount of stuff. And right now you have a good aesthetic amount of stuff. But there is a line that you have to kind of draw. draw. You get to draw a line in the sand and say, mm-hmm. I'm not yep. going to collect more than this. Or if I am, it's just going to be somewhere out of sight because... I don't know, man. I just, I don't know about how, like, I don't know about dedicating, like, whole basements. Have you seen the, those things? Oh, like, where, like, man. I've seen every, some Instagrammers just mad. The walls coded in video games. And I'm like, first of all, that is, like, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Like, that is a lot of money. Second of all, like, what happens if someone breaks into your house? Like, what are you going to do about that? that, that that's, that's a terrible time. And then like a fire and stuff. I saw a video recently of a house blowing up in America. I don't know if you saw that. It had a gas leak. I did see that. Just exploded. Just Nintendo 64 games. (laughs) Just flying in the air. Oh, it just, I guess it makes me more nervous than anything. Because like, you know, everyone has their own thing they like doing. If you like collecting, you like collecting. But I've just never, I've just been like, I don't even know if I have, I would ever have the space, time or money to be able to like seek out all of those things and i think there's like a few variants of collectors right you've got the collectors which like nostalgic stuff they want to buy the things that kind of give them joy and memories from Mm -hmm, the past mm -hmm. and then you've got collectors which are purely there for profit um yeah sometimes i think i'm a a little bit of both i would i will admit (laughs) especially with pokemon like i like the old stuff but then some stuff i will pick up just to be like i'll keep this sealed and maybe just 35 years i can buy a new car well, uh, and I, I will admit, in digging for my retro collection stuff here, I, it, it was two things happened. I was like, oh, I actually have a little bit more than I thought I did because I don't have mm. that much, honestly. But then I was also like, I'm, it made me sad because I realized how much I've gotten rid of over the years, too, that I shouldn't have gotten rid of. I'm like, gosh, why did I, yeah. why did I sell that? Or like, why, why did I get rid of all these cool things that I had? So there's, there's, there's a give and take. But, you know, in the, in the grand scheme of things, I have a, a, a pile of things here to show you that I'm excited about. I pick stuff that I feel like is a little bit all over the board, all, all, all across the board. Some retro, some not as retro. We'll mm. see. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. But before we jump into the main topic of the show, as I mentioned last week on the podcast, we are uh, ending or getting close to the end of our giveaway. And we are going to announce the winner on this show. And I'm going to try and do this really jankily on our comments section so i'm just i'm scrolling through and whoever's like been just engaging and all this kinds of stuff i'm just gonna like stop and like pick somebody nice and so uh let me uh actually we haven't ones. found a way to export comments to a to a, what they call it csv file or something so that you can put it in a, those things that's so typically just gonna it. Do it by hand yeah but randomly <laughs> By hand, but randomly. Yeah. I wish that I had, um, how do you say, oh, oh, actually, oh, this is even better. Okay. This is what I wanted. I found all the subscribers. I found them all. Nice. Lifetime subscriber. We have 700. uh, That's one thing I wanted to say at the top of the show as as well, Brandon. Um, the, the, the retro gaming community that you formed from retro Dodo that have also kind of 
carried over to here. Such nice people. Such such lovely people. They are lovely. They are they're, lovely. They've been on there and they've just been so kind. So kind and just just, you know, just saying wonderful things on the on the comments and really adding to the conversation. So I appreciate everyone that tunes in. Um, but yeah, let me I'm just gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna kind of scroll through here. I'm just gonna stick stick down on one and we're just gonna point to them. Do it. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> oh gosh, okay. <laughs> Oh, all right. It looks like Cameron Dunn. C A M E R O N D U N N. You are the lucky recipient of an Retroid Pocket 3 Plus straight from Brandon's collection. I should have had some music. I'll add that in post. Some some music to announce <laughs> the winner. Yeah, it'll be like a Mario Party winning song or something like that. But yeah, Cameron Dunn, you will be the new recipient of a, a retro pocket three plus we will reach out to you separately and coordinate some way to get that to you so there you have it folks for all who subscribed we hope you stick around even if you didn't win something <laughs> brandon mentioned we might do some more giveaways in the future so who knows definitely you're not subs- I, I want to try every three months i think but you're not subscribing for the giveaways guys you're <laughs> yeah. subscribing for this golden content okay <laughs> all right the you're best gift else. of them all that's right that's right the content baby <laughs> All right. So uh, real quick, I did want to shout out Andrea on Spotify. She wrote in on one of our polls and she said, I'd get rid of remasters ports uh, from our last last episode. Uh, I'd get yep. rid of remasters. Ports are great as they keep the original form of the game. Remakes can be hit or miss, but are usually appreciable. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping that, that Andrea was a woman. I've, I, I assumed that. I apologize if that was not correct. But yeah, thank you for writing in, um, and I agree. Yeah. I think that's what I said. I think remasters, get them out of here. Brandon, you were saying <laughs> get, get, get rid of the ports. Yeah, yeah. So. I don't think that went down well. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no one made comments about that. True, true. Yeah, thanks mm-hmm. for the thanks for the comment. That's always nice to get comments from uh, Spotify. Yeah, yeah. Few and few and far between. We had a a lot of people vote in the polls um, on the Sonic Mario versus Sonic episode. Um, and I'm trying to see who came out on top on that one. I'm pretty sure Mario came out on top on the polls. <laughs> <laughs> I think they needed to uh, balance the balance it out there. Oh shoot! Yeah, I'll look at that later. All right. Well, uh, Brandon, you want to jump into our show and tell section? Yeah, I will jump straight in. And I don't know if I mentioned this on the previous podcast or it was when we were not recording, but I actually went to a card game show recently. And usually I'm typically looking for Pokemon stuff, but there's a new trend that I'm looking at. It's not a trend. It's just something I'm interested in. (laughs) Nintendo-based cards, collectible cards. So for those watching on YouTube, I am showing a Nintendo Game Boy trading card. These used to come in packs which, uh, of like bubble gum, but they were plastic and looked like a Nintendo Game Boy that you pop open and you could have used for like wow. crayons or something. So that's like a little Super, Mario, Super Mario Land. Land. Yeah. yeah, the Game Boy game. That's so nice. It looks yeah. so nice too. Graded a nine too? Five. Oh, a five. I wish. Okay. But this <laughs> I one, like, this one is a bad boy. This is graded <gasps> a 9.5. Whoa, dude. The Golden Mario. Mario. Yep, yeah, from 2010 Nintendo Wii cards it looks like yeah new super mario bros kind of art style or something like that yeah and the, these aren't worth much this was like a hundred bucks so it's not like it's a high value mm. uh card but then there's some in here look at this oh oh look at that case a, a nice aluminum case. case that looks like something you'd hold some some illicit objects in there maybe you know some drugs <laughs> I was just running around the card show. Like, oh, I got my Nintendo card. <laughs> Get out of my way. Is that, is that how you run around too? Your yeah. arms up to your sides like this. Thick in the skull, thick in the arm. Do you, do you want to see my card? <laughs> oh, oh, listen Ooh. to that. Clasp. Oh, so in here, these are like <laughs> Nintendo stickers from I think the late eighties. We've got There's a score to settle. Hundreds of these things, right? Yeah, how did you get so many of those? Was that just like, did it come in a box like that? So no, so he had them in like a little car. It was, it, it wasn't the way I liked it. I like keeping these things protected. A little Zelda sticker with tips on the back. So these are called like tip cards. Dude, you collect like thirty three. It says there. That's incredible. But there's some, there's some nicer ones. 
which are called like scratch cards. So you can't see, maybe, oh, you can. You can yeah, scratch Super the Mario areas too. of like the coins. It's and beautiful. What would you oh, win if you scratched that off though? I don't think you win anything. I just think they're like little games that were in like <sighs> bubblegum okay. packs. Okay. But uh, there's tons of these and there's like Zelda ones, double dragon ones. How did they fit those in gubble bump, like gubble, eh, bubble gum packs? So the, the, the bubble gum packs were like quite big. They usually oh. have like stickers and cards in there. You guys had stuff. big ones, dude. We didn't have big bubble gum packs. At least, well, maybe in the 80s they did. More double dragon stuff. Where is double the dragon. Zelda? There's definitely a Zelda one here somewhere. You had oh, a Zelda yeah. one look out. At, look at this beauty. That is really cool. I like that. Are there so some that are worth more than others? So they're not worth a lot. So for all like a hundred there was 175 pounds, so around about $200. Wow. So not super collectible or high value collectibles, but if you get them graded and they come back a 10, they're like mm -hmm. 200 pounds a pop. But Ooh. the chances of that happening is very low because they're old cards. They've been in mm -hmm. bubblegum packs. The kids have been like <laughs> bending them and stuff. So, yeah. Well, they look good in the cases you have them set up in. So mm. you can just you can just hang on to them and you can put them all over your walls. How about that? <laughs> yeah. But don't like but like no method. Just like tape them. Just like tape them up to the wall. You know, just like put them up there. The issue is so there's like a hundred there, right? If you want to grade them, they're like twenty bucks each. So to, to grade them, to get them is graded, twenty bucks each, and you mm. don't know if they'll get a one or a ten. So it's kind of a bit like gambling Dang. at this point. And yeah, if you, you get anything hope. less than a ten, they're still only worth twenty pounds a pop. So you're like, mm. I've lost money if they get less than a ten. Dang. Mm. Well, that's super sick. I like that. I like that you have all those, and they're all they're all gaming related collectible cards, which is pretty cool. I don't mm -hmm. I don't think I've seen as many of those lately. So nice, <laughs> nice start off. Well, thanks. This one, um, my first one I'm going to show off here is a complete inbox copy Ooh. of Mario Tennis for the N64. Okay, it's got some it's got some wear on it, uh, but I picked this up one because it actually is not that expensive. Um, this is one of the more affordable games. And I think I got a good deal at the time. I bought this probably like, I don't know, like eight or nine years ago, maybe at this point now, but I just love the uh, way that these were set up. So like, you know, now we have plastic cases that just give you, you know, it, all you get really is just the game, maybe a manual, but not usually a manual anymore. Mm -hmm. But like the, 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 the cartridge, like literally just is in this cardboard box. It's just, <laughs> there's like a little tiny sleeve that kind of keeps it in place. And that's it. Uh, and then it has this little manual it comes with. Manuals, uh, man. I miss those. It's got a little Mario on there. And it says, player's guide. Offer inside. You know, and it's got a little, you snooze, you lose. Sign up for Nintendo Power today. So this is like a Nintendo Power <laughs> advert. And it's little Mario just taking a nap on the back back there. But I mean, look at this. Look how cool this Full is. Full color as well, right? Usually. Yes. Yeah. Look at this. Oh. This is like an early advert for like Super Mario 64. You know, it's like the game had just come out and it was like, everyone's like, this is, this is it. This is the future of gaming. What were you uh, subscribing to then? Is it subscribe to save? Are you like, is that? This what? is Nintendo Power. This is like oh, the Nintendo Power. Yeah. The yep. magazine, Nintendo Power. Got you. Um, but yeah, I mean, like just the artwork on these and then like the, the, the options. Yes. I want 12 issues of Nintendo Power plus a free Super Mario 64 player's guide for 20 or 1995 us so it's like wow what a deal um that but yeah, bad. I mean, yeah you, you get a you get a free player's guide so you could you could conquer mario 64 if you wanted to and then of course you know the consumer information and precautions booklet everyone's favorite uh -huh. <laughs> very boring <laughs> and then the actual instruction booklet itself for mario tennis beautiful and you know what's kind of kind of annoying uh but also really cool is the game you know, I think if you do the tutorial and like some of the mini games in Mario in Mario Tennis, it would tell you how to like do some special shots. Uh, but this actually lays out how to do like there's like drop shots, there's there's lobs, there's uh, power shots, there's slices, top spin, um, and there's like a few other like special moves that I don't think you would really know how to do otherwise unless you actually watched or like read through this tutorial. Like this manual actually gave you some some inside tips on how to actually do good some size manual as well what's that like folded out a4 uh yeah that seems it seems seems about right yeah it's pretty sm yeah not like huge um but yeah this thing is like a hundred and something or not a hundred 
This thing is, why did I say 100? Uh, 35, 36 pages. Solid. And it shows you all the like, secret characters at the very end. You know, you can unlock some secret characters, you know, and it's showing you like these guys you could get later. <laughs> Shy Guy and Donkey Kong Jr. What's crazy, right, is that like the boxes for games, they haven't really changed size. You know, you, the Game Boy ones are fairly small, but you look at the like that, that's probably similar size to a Nintendo Switch cartridge, maybe a little thicker. Mm-hmm. Um, the box, yeah. But in reality, the the actual cartridge is tiny. But I guess they do that because they want more advertising space in stores, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, at the time, I'm sure it was all about shelf space and making sure... Sorry, I was talking over the mic. At the time, I'm sure it was all about self, uh, shelf space and making mm. sure you had stuff. But reading the back of this is kind of funny too. So all of your wacky favorite characters hit the court. A lot, a lot of puns in this. Hit the court <laughs> in a wild and wacky multiplayer tennis game from the makers of Mario Golf, Mario and Luigi, Bowser, Peach, Toad, and Donkey Kong lead off the all-star 14-player lineup. The fast-paced action will have you unleashing vicious follies, life-saving lobs, ballistic backhands, and electrifying supercharged smashes. <laughs> I mean, look at this. Look at this artwork, too. Like, look at the, just like the game, the gameplay back there. Nice, yeah. It's not that, it's, it doesn't look that good, but... <laughs> Man, I love this game. I used to freaking wax my friends as Luigi. So <laughs> that's my first one. Good, good choice. Nice. Thank you. And to have it boxed in good condition still. With the manuals and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, pretty fun. Impressive. What you got on your side, bro? My second choice. Now, I want to see if you can guess this. Guess the name of this and it ends in boy. You might, oh. You might know it. Is it a Game Boy? Oh, I was wrong. I was wrong. <laughs> Guess what this is called. This is made by Konami, so it's called the Konami Something Boy. You you pulled this out on a previous podcast because I think you'd picked it up not too recently or not too long ago. Um, Mega Boy, something Super Boy. Close. Yeah, very close. Yeah, the John, Hyper Boy. Hyper Boy. So for those listening, this is a oversized Game Boy DMG accessory that magnifies the screen, <laughs> adds more battery life, and gives you a, a knobbly arcade stick and big juicy buttons. Oh, I did this on the ASMR part, didn't I? No, that was, the ASMR was oh. the Genesis one. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, we keep doing that on all of our podcasts now. Listen to this. This is the joystick. Ready? This is your A, B, smash buttons. <laughs> it's so crunchy and loud. Clunky. I don't think I have... Do I have batteries in? Like This takes... Oh, Jesus. Takes these big boys. Oh, Panasonic. You know? Those are D batteries. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe, I, might maybe have bigger. My, uh, I might have my Game Boy. One second. It's yeah, just where's your, I want to see this thing in operation, man. I want to see you play some Tetris on that bad boy. Can you imagine how many, like people actually pick this up i'm like all like the neighborhood moms probably to like beat their friends in tetris big up oh. retro modding for this neoprene sleeve Ooh. Ooh. no wow that's a nice game boy listen to this if you oh, this is <laughs> this is gonna sound clunk just even like rubbing them Stop. jesus inside it goes <laughs> he's already. sliding the game boy into this thing now Ooh. Oh, that does sound nice. That does and sound then, nice. It kind of clicks in there. Why. Turn on the Game Boy. So the Game Boy, Boy has to be on. I think you can see this. Ooh. Oh, there's a little light. I don't know yeah, if I can make... There's a light. I see it. Wow. Dude, I can see so much. It's so magnified. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, and it's got like big speakers in it as well. So you're meant to like... Oh. Everything's magnified from the sound to the buttons to the lights. It did just make a noise then. How do I do that again? You turned it, turned the Game Boy back on and off, I think, maybe. Let's try this. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh! That's a good beep. That's a good beep. That's a nostalgic beep right there. Konami. I've got this bad boy boxed as well, Hyper man. Boy. Hyper Boy. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I like the way, I love the way it looks. I love the, just the stark contrast of the red joystick. You can take I'm the sure you dark take gray, this. light gray. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You can you take this clean screen it? off. Yeah, if you want to clean it. So that's the magnifier. I oh. can see my uh, <laughs> yeah, your eyes. Can eat. 
<laughs> that's a great that's a good uh I'll, I'll clip that later yeah so that's the hyper boy it weighs a ton man like i yeah. can really like squat with this <laughs> yeah dude yeah dude what were we saying big arms big arms and thick arms and thick, thick, thick in the arm thick in the head that's what they call the <laughs> somerset folk just lifting hyper boys up the entire time dude, i love that, that is thing sweet. i bought that years ago and it's just when the Game Boy came out, and especially up to the Game Boy Advance in the early 2000s, like there were so many third-party companies trying to take full advantage of accessories. Nintendo oh, didn't yeah. give a crap. Nope. They just said, sure, as long as you're helping us sell more Game Boys, we do not care. Go for mm-hmm. it, sure. Um, I had a, We had a few of those. I think I've talked about this before, so forgive me, listeners, but we had a, uh, we had a thing that wrapped around the Game Boy, and that had like the speakers would fold out and like you could pop the magnifier up above the game boy and so you could like you know have you could just like sit there and game on it and i think it added a joystick and it it didn't feel that good to be honest like it was so heavy once you put it all on there and you're like i can't this is no longer a mobile what was that gaming device. did that have like a boy at the end of it as well is that like <sighs> dude i don't even know i'll i'll find it for you i'll send you i'll send you a picture it's it was like the same color it was a see-through purple as our a see-through purple game boy yeah, color yeah yeah purple game boy color attachment I've, yeah. I've we've got a video like top eight craziest game boy accessories that i did years ago um <laughs> there are some crazy ones dude like there's ones where you can like add bumpers to the bottom of a game boy color and stuff i think the one that you're on about might be called the handy pack mm, could be yeah, I'm seeing Pelican Survival Kit. I think I saw something like that. Game Boy Color Magnifier. Oh, this what website am I on? This is this this doesn't even look like eBay. This looks like I'm about to get a virus. I'm gonna get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this is. All right. <clears throat> so my second item is one that I actually really uh, have not used much. It's just something that I got from my brother. He had at his house when he gave me a whole box collection of the original just Nintendo NES, the front loader NES. And so that is the Ooh. the zapper, the oh, Nintendo man. 1985 light gun. I never that had would, that. That you would use for duck hunt um, and other related games. But... This gun, like, it just still feels so good. Like, I have a grown ass adult man hand, and this thing, <laughs> this thing fits in my hand perfectly fine. And listen to this, dude. You hear that Ooh. clicky? Yeah. And the spring, the little like little. Yeah, dude, this thing has great tactile feedback. I can shoot so many ducks out of the sky with this bad boy if I wanted to. It's got that um, classic design, hasn't it? You know, with mm-hmm. that, that DMG gray that Nintendo loved. Yep. The orange. Where else have they used that orange? That's quite unique. No? The orange uh, really, I think, only showed up in some accessories. And it was, I think, in correlation with like, Duck Hunt. Like Duck Hunt right. had like some of those harsh oranges like that. And I think this, um, it's just... The fact that it's kind of stayed in in relevance through like Splatoon, you know, how you can get the oh, yeah, you yeah. can get the end zapper as like an, an ink gun. And then at, at one point it was like in the meta as one of like the best guns that you could possibly get. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but um I just love this. I just love this and it displays so nicely. Like the only thing that stinks is this cord. Like this cord is just just it's everywhere. So I don't know how to display the cord in a cool way. But if you like lay this on its side, you know, like this sitting on your shelf, everyone's like, yeah, that's I just cool. pictured like having a wall with all of like the old retro console guns because I'm sure there's like a big blaster as well. That oh, I can't yeah. remember what console it's for. Yeah. Like a rifle and stuff like that. Yeah. And this one, I mean, this one has like a little, uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's trying, trying to make it focus right there. But it's like it Nintendo has. Nintendo Zapper. 85? Yeah. 1985 Nintendo Zapper. Yeah pretty pretty cool mm. i i don't know if i'll ever use this again but it's just one of those things that i like that i i like to have and then like i'm trying to see yeah model number nes 005 made in japan patent patent pending so when they made this they haven't even finalized the patent yet. wouldn't it be great if they did something like they did with the, the nes mini where they you just make that plug and play you add something Ooh. to your hd tv preloaded games that'd be cool bit the, the only downside is these guns don't even work on CR on like 
regular TVs anymore. Uh, they mm-hmm. only work on CRTs. They need the uh, tubes in the background to be able to like actually locate the infrared laser coming out of this and uh, pixelate like where your your cursor is supposed to be. Uh, Which again, amazing technology at the time that they were able to, able to figure that out. But because uh, it was pretty precise too, you know, I think we had to actually worse a worse setup with like the Wii the Wii U remotes when we were trying to use those bad boys. <laughs> God, yeah, the Wii gotta love it. All right, man. What's your next one? Last but not least, and I didn't know I was going to show this until about two minutes ago, Um, but it's been behind me forever, and sometimes you can see it in our photos, sometimes you can see it in in the videos, it's this here, and this goes back to my hoarding (laughs) days of like Pokemon (laughs) stuff. To have a guess what that is, if you can guess what that is, I'll give you one. The Pokeball, is it like a micro machines, like expandable thing that opens up and there's like a world on the inside? Close, close. Oh, I'm excited about this. That thing is huge. I have noticed that many, many times back there. Look at this thing. Look how big this is. It's got a big old handle on the back of it. So you can carry it. I need to open it up. You were right. It opens up, but it's not micro machines. It better open up. What? I just... Are those marbles? <laughs> These are marbles, dude. <laughs> what? And I haven't found anyone with the full collection. Hold, I don't have a full collection. Hold on, dude. I am so curious. Please do not spill these marbles everywhere. Oh, <laughs> I'm man. so nervous. <laughs> There's hundreds of these things. Dude. Oh. <laughs> oh God, I think so. This this door. Oh. Oh, be careful. Be right, careful. I'm not going to open it up anymore. Yeah, oh, just shit, man. If I drop this, yeah, just a just a quick display so the folks can see what the heck is happening in the background. Oh my <laughs> god, dude, that's so dude, many marbles. It opens up even more, dude. It's the whole 151 with characters as well, and there's like normal ones. So this is a shelter. You you definitely won't be able to see it, but it's oh it's, my no, I can see it. Yeah, flip see, it around. You see through it, right. Yeah, flip There's it around. There's hollow versions. Where's the shelter? Oh, on there's, the inside? Here's the shelter. Oh, yeah, there's the shelter. There's hollow versions. Oh, dude, what's your work. what's your what's your best marble? You got some legendaries in there? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> you want to see my best marble? <laughs> I thought you'd never <laughs> ask, man. <laughs> Woo! All righty. So, <laughs> I need to dig deeper. So there's another level down here where you get like where all the good the, ones are. Yeah, where you get Mewtwo, but this, this is... Please be careful. You're making me so nervous. For context, he has this thing sitting on his desk, and you can see his face contorting as he's trying to open this. <laughs> and I'm just I, can't picturing, go, I can't go down there. But I'm just picturing the marbles going flying everywhere. I do have a holographic Charizard. How so is you it can holographic? See, so let's oh, it's just a marble color. It's like that shiny yeah, like metal the color. Tr- transparent look. And then this is okay. just like super shiny. Wow. I didn't even know. I literally had no idea this even existed. Marble. Dude. Pokemon marbles. You got Electabuzz right there. Electabuzz. You get like, you can get the trainers as well. I can't get down here because like the bottom bit is just so old. And ooh. oh, I did. Nope. I got another. Dude, I got two holographic Charizards. Holy <laughs> smokes. Oh man, we could do a How whole much of these worth? How much are these marbles worth? Dude, this is... they, they go for like four to eight pounds a pop, but there's like 160 of them. Oh my goodness. And the yeah. case, which I also have boxed, I, can't, I don't know, it must be under 50. No oh, more, more than that. Dude, I remember this packaging. I'm looking at the uh, Raichu uh, collectible marble case. So this guy hasn't even gotten the marble out of the package yet and it literally so the pouches tons, right yeah tons of plastic but then there's like a little circle and the marble is sitting in the middle of it and they can like bounce around freely oh, in there oh yeah they i think they sh- they shoot them out those things so there's loads of accessories you can get the pouches which you can collect because wow. they have got the pokemon on and then you've got those shooting things oh yeah this came with eight marbles dude mm-hmm. this was a this was a clip you could clip to your belt bro Oh, I need to get oh. one of those. Oh, dude. We were talking about last week being the cool guy with the uh, Pokemon Heart Gold little step step tracker. If you have one of these bad boys with your marbles in it. Oh. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. 
I wonder if I can move you guys. Oh, I'm, I'm moving you so you can kind of see. Oh, this is a good this, view. How this thing. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We are, we're moving around a lot now. So you can kind of see like these fold around. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, closing yeah. it. And then there's actually like a grip at the back. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's like a, that's like the Death Star, but for marbles. You got this handle looks. If I wanted to like take it like a bloody lunchbox, I could. Yeah, dude. You could swap out the marbles for like some grapes, I guess, and bring that to the park with you if you want to. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, that is sick. I literally, I don't think I've ever known that I'd like, I remember the packaging, but not the actual marbles themselves. Wow. That is pretty special. That is pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, if you can get a whole collection, bravo. If you can get a whole holographic collection, shit the bed. <sighs> yeah, this thing is selling for $43 right now, just the little Raichu marble. Full what? Cool. It, what well, marble? Or is that well, a pouch? I, th I, think, I think it's the pouch. The inbox complete sealed with like eight marbles maybe. Yeah, Full yeah. Full collectible. Yeah. I've bought a few of those because I can't find anyone selling individuals. So you have to kind of buy like bundles. So if I want to complete this thing. Oh, jeez. Actually, there is someone selling a whole collection by the looks of things. Complete marble set. I want the whole thing. Everyone's just talking about these pouches. I don't want the pouch. I want the whole thing. Complete Pokemon Glass Marble Collection. $1,200, man. <gasps> Oh, dude! They made some. They made some new additions. They have a 2007 Pokemon Diamond and Pearl special I've edition. Seen, I'm looking at that now. See, this is where it gets dangerous because I'm like, oh, would that make a good video? Okay, so that's yeah, like Hungry Hippos. <laughs> Hungry Hippos, <laughs> a great game. Yeah, this guy has. Uh, he has the same Pokeball as you. The Pokemon Marbles Collection Complete Rare co Collection, uh, one thousand. One thousand dollars, Jesus. And it's yeah. You know, I don't know if he has anything else going on in there, but it does look pretty nice with all the marbles in there. One Dang. day, man. One day, dude. That thing is <laughs> sick. That thing is sick. I love that. Might like buy the whole collection, and then when me and Kate get married, like melt it into a ring. <laughs> <laughs> I've made this for you. Here you are. These are all my Pokemon marbles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is great. What dude, about I you? Your last one, dude. All right. This, this last one's kind of a weird one. All right. You're going to hear some crinklies. I don't know if you can hear that yet. Um, because I have a box of Super Mario cereal. <laughs> oh, man. And I put it inside of just two Ziplocs to kind of protect it from the elements because there's food and... There's actual food in here, and I was like, I don't know how this, how long I need to like shrink wrap this. But yes, when Mario Odyssey came out in 2017, they were like selling this limited limited time box in America. I don't know if they had this in the UK or not of Mario cereal, and on the back it has like games and stuff, and it's it's an amiibo. This box is a special amiibo, so what? it has it has an NFC chip in it. You can scan it on the back here, this little this little spot right here, and you can scan wow. your cereal into the game or into any kind of game. Did and you ever think when you were younger you were going to be on a podcast showing your six-year-old cereal? <laughs> six-year-old six cereal. I guarantee you if I opened this up and like tried this, it probably would taste okay because, I mean, like this mm. stuff is just like straight sugar. It's basically like Lucky Charms. Like you can see down there they have Little marshmallows, oh, in mushrooms, there. little question box, mm -hmm. little nice. one-up mushroom. Um, I think I bought two boxes initially, uh, one to try and one to keep. And again, you know, kind of what you're talking about earlier. I'm not that much of a collector, but I was like, I kind of want to hang on to one of these boxes. Cereal's your thing, man. Just so strange. Like it's just a weird. Like why? Why did they do this? Um, and I'm surprised they haven't like brought it back. You know, with a Mario movie, they could just like. I remember in the maybe it was like early two thousands or night late nineties, Pokemon did something similar with like the the little softy. I don't even know what you call them. The little sweet, the softy mush, mar, marshmallow things. Crispy uh, rice krispies. Yeah, rice krispies shaped Pokemon treats. Um, but yeah, I mean, like the the back of this box is great. It has like some older art, and then obviously the stuff from Mario o Odyssey on there. 
Um, but it's just it's just a, a weird thing that I have that I feel like is fun. I don't know what I'll ever do with this. I don't even think it's probably worth that much money. But the fact that I have a six year old box of cereal that's Mario themed is just great to me. So is it called? So it's 2017 Super Mario cereal. Let's have mm-hmm. let's have a look. See if anyone's <laughs> twenty bucks. <laughs> oh, someone's selling for forty six. Okay, twenty nine dollars, right. but twenty dollars shipping. So you're looking at like thirty to fifty bucks. Jesus, it, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. And the and the flavor, you'd be surprised about this. It's not just like Lucky Charms. It's mixed berry cereal with marshmallows. So I guess the uh, little rice puffs in there taste like mixed berries, mm-hmm. which, you know, looking at the reviews for this, 3.7 stars. <laughs> well, someone's reviewed a cereal. <laughs> yeah, because the flavor, you know, uh, people are not that fond of it. Let's see. Let's see what all the one star reviews are. This will be pretty funny, actually. Um, how do we get to the one stars? Show me those. How do, how do I find like normally? OK, here's a here's a two star. Not so super. As another reviewer mentioned, there are not many marshmallows. The kids were expecting something similar to Lucky Charms, but this isn't very comparable. The berry flavor is not so good and ultimately left them choosing something else. We really wanted to like this, but we were a bit disappointed. <laughs> God. Got a grip. Actually, one star. The box does not look the same. My son loves Mario and Cappy. He was upset to find Bowser on the box instead. However, I told him it was the, it was the, still the same product inside, but when we opened it all, the colorful charms were warped, distorted, and unrecognizable. The box also looked a bit smashed, but I gave it a chance because my son loves, all caps, Mario. That's from Walmart.com. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Mm. I'm impressed with our choices. I like think so, too. A, that was good. That wasn't no basic, look at my Game Boy game. You yeah. know. I got some weird stuff. Yeah, I I got some weird stuff. And you had some weird stuff. Actually, I mean, really the weirdest thing was just a cereal. But that that marble (laughs) collector set, that was special. Um, Honorable mention really quick, Brandon. Two gold things. Two gold things. One that you'll appreciate. This is... Oh, uh, man, I'm jealous. This is the uh, golden togepi from... Carrot-plated gold Pokemon card from... Is it Burger King? Yeah, Burger King. Yeah, and you usually get it in a little Pokeball stand. Have you got that? Don't have the Pokeball stand, which is <laughs> I just really need sad. The gold. <laughs> which is really sad. But I found this in the box when I was looking through, and I was like, "Holy smokes!" I didn't know I even had one of these. Yeah, but it's Togepi, and it says length question mark weight question mark Pokemon information on Togepi unknown at this time two exclamation points. <laughs> oh, but it, it's because technically it's a Gen two Pokemon. Maybe it came out this like during like right the TV show. Because mm-hmm. Misty, when the anime was carrying around Togepi for a long time, or the the egg, and mm. he didn't know what it was, and then it finally hatched, and you're, we were like, "What is that Pokemon?" And, so uh, weird. Last yeah. night, my Togepi hatched in Soul Silver. <gasps> How weird! Whoa, look at this. Yeah. So yeah, straight into the PC, man. Straight Deposited. <laughs> Save it for later. Togepi is not really a viable Pokemon in that game. No. Um, and then the other one that I have is just this uh, gold boxed or gold oh, nice. cartridge yeah. of Zelda. These are not rare at all. Uh, they all were gold, I'm pretty sure. Um, but it's cool. I wish Nintendo would do this more, like give you some different colored cartridges for your, your Switch. I feel like they've lost their magic a little bit, especially like the console editions. They're just like nothing's high quality. Nothing's like s- screaming to you. And, and they could do so much with the, the little cartridges. Like you said, go gold, go transparent mm-hmm. like they did with the, po- the Game Boy games. I mean, dude, remember when, yeah, remember all the Pokemon games, they had different colors. At least, like, I don't know when, when they stopped. I think DS is when they stopped doing that because it was probably too expensive to make new plastic mm. in those tiny, mm. tiny cartridges. But, I mean, up until the Game Boy Advance, every single version was a different color. So, you're like, oh, yeah, there's my blue version because it's blue. There's my red yeah. version because it's red. <sighs> Not anymore. Talking Not of anymore. cartridges, actually, I bought some... Um like cheap Ooh. storage containers for my yeah look at that beautiful yeah and these Green. are like little i think i t- we spoke about it when anthony was in but like magnetic. little magnetic and then they're j- i just put them on display oh golden sun like good five bucks good choice that game rips yeah gosh man one day it'll come it'll come to nso and i'll play it again well 
And there you have it, folks. There are our retro show and tell items. We hope you enjoyed this. Sorry if we didn't do a great job of describing what we were holding. You know, this would we be good holding. to get like guests on, like show and tell with guests. You know, when we had like Ooh, Bob Wolf on yeah. and uh, Russ, like if they showed us their weirdest like retro mm-hmm. gaming memorabilia. That's a good idea. Like uh, just like a small segment of the podcast. Like, hey, show us one of your weirdest yeah. things before we get started. We want to know or maybe near the end. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I like mm-hmm. that. We'll save that. We'll save that idea for later. Genius. Mm-hmm. All right, Brandon, before we close out, are you playing anything right now? You got anything you want to talk about? Do a uh, Doom Quake 2 on Nintendo Switch. Oh, kind of enjoy yeah. That. It was like nine bucks or nine pounds. I was like, I'm going to do it. And yeah, I've got my money's worth in the first few levels. It's great. Great. So I was never a Quake person. I know it was huge because uh, it was like multiplayer on steroids. Like you could just mm-hmm. sprint across the map and jetpack into people and rocket launch them in the face. And then. Yeah, yeah just a fun time so i'm tempted is it worth jumping back in do you think someone like me who's not really played it that much that'd be like a good yeah good for experience? like 10 bucks you know it, it's it's good and it forces you to be quick just running through shotgunning people jumping over them like just smashing out and it comes up with like timings on your level mm-hmm. so it kind of entices you to just smash through it i like that i like that i do like i mean i i like to 007 like Nightfire or Agent yeah, of Fire yeah. on GameCube. I played those to death. So I think I could do this. I think I could yeah. do it. Yeah. Um, I'm not playing much else different from last week. Final Fantasy 16, man. That game is so good. I'm really enjoying yeah. that. Story is great. And I don't mind that it's kind of linear. I think that's that's helping it in this case. It's a good, mm-hmm. it's a good story. So I'm in. And uh yeah, I'll be I'll be finishing that. But I have I have hopes after this to go back to uh Hogwarts Legacy. Because I'm nice. going back through the Harry Potter books right now uh, on audiobook, and uh, yeah, I'm just like, dang, I want, I'm, I'm interested just to see like how this game kind of compares and pulls in from some of that stuff. So we'll see. That's a game I need to get back into actually, because I bought that full price. You know, when mm-hmm. you buy something full price, you're like, I need to get at least like 15, <laughs> 20 hours out of that. I got to go back to this. I'm, yeah. I'm not selling this until I've got my money's worth. Yeah. Well. We'll see. I'll, I'll report back if I've played it or not. But unfortunately, all that is all the time we have this week. Listeners, what are your most prized retro gaming items? Let us know by writing into retrospect retrododo.com or commenting on your preferred listening channel. Brandon, where can the good folks find you on the internet? Doing a lot of work over on Card Gamer's uh, YouTube channel. We're doing a couple of Pokemon unboxings. And on Friday, I'm picking up Disney Lorcana. And then a few Ooh. weeks later, the Pokemon 151 set. It's all kicking off over there. So just head over to Card Gamer's YouTube channel. Oh, the 151 set. Is that the uh, the fancy like reprint of all the original? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. They're oh. just doing all the 151 cards. And Kadabra nice. came, is coming back because they had a legal issue with Kadabra and they couldn't use it for like, I think it was like 15 years, the cards. It wasn't in oh. sets for years, but it's returning because, I don't know. Just like Nintendo it was them broken off. or like too competitively viable or like. No, those. there was someone who sued Nintendo for the word or the use of Kadabra. Apparently, I don't know if it really? was like an art illustration or there's some legalities behind it. Wow. Um, we should I, do a post on that, actually. That is interesting. Yeah. Curious case of Cadabra. Mm. Huh. All right. And then for me, y'all, it's just bit bloggist everywhere. Not posting much. But uh, yeah, if you want to join in on the conversation, you can follow me on X at bit bloggist. So until then, y'all, we'll catch you in the next episode.